Hello, today I'm going to be walking you through pages and what you can do with them. First, I'd like to show you an example of a great use of a page. I'm going to enter into my Spanish 102 course. I can go into my modules and I can view any of these modules for the week for my students. For example, in our Bienvenidos or Orientation module, I've used a page to create a liquid syllabus. I can go ahead and click on this page and as you can see within the page, I've got ban a banner, I have different text boxes, I have links for my students, and also videos, I have pictures, and I have checkpoint quizzes and links. This is one way that you can use pages. Another way to use pages is you can insert information. For example, this Meet Profe Hale is another page. Here I've got my picture and a little bit about me. You can use pages to deliver content as well. For example, if I go to modules and I go to our first week, here, Semana Uno, I can also create pages to talk about the weekly activities and goals. And here I can give students information and a checklist for what they're going to be doing during the week. I can also provide videos and other content by using pages as well. So if I go back to that week, I can scroll down to the next week where we start some of our activities for learning. So here, Miércoles Learn Grammar with Profe Hale, for example, is another content page. You can identify pages by their little page icon next to them. If I click on this, you can see here I've provided information for my students, how to learn actively, and at the very bottom, I've inclu included a lecture video. Students can click on this and watch their lecture video. I've also included a, a link or a downloadable um, link for the PowerPoint for that presentation. So. These are just a few ways that a few ways, excuse me, that you can use pages in your courses. So let me show you how you can create a page. I'm going to go back to my dashboard and I'm going to find my sandbox so I can demonstrate this for you. After clicking on sandbox, I'm going to go to the pages area. Notice that I've hidden this for students. I don't want students to see a long list of all the pages in my course. Instead, I want to organize those pages into great modules, either by theme or week by week. As an instructor, I'm going to click on Pages to go to the Builder area for Pages. At the top right corner, I can see a button that says Plus Page. This is going to add a new page. Here, you're going to want to enter a title for your page, and then also some form of header. You'll notice up here that you have different icons. This is your rich text editor bar. First, you have Edit, where you can copy and paste text. View, where you can make it full screen or access the HTML editor. Insert, where you can add links, images, media, documents, equations, tables, embed videos from the internet, or add a horizontal line to break up information on the page. You can have format, where you do bold, italicized, strike through, and change the font and size and text color. Next, you have tools where you can do the word count and add different apps. For example, if you're using Canvas Studio to have videos that have embedded quiz questions. And finally, you can insert different tables. All of these icons are or are also accessible down here in the small icons bar. This is your quick access rich text editor. Here is where you can add all of the formatting. Here you can insert items and here you can change either the paragraph setting and add bulleted or numbered or or ABC lists and here you can add indentations. Next you can add equations and tables and finally you have the little cloud which is for embedding. First, if I want to add some basic content to my page, I will want to start by adding some form of header. This can be the title or other information that's important on the page. To set the header, I'm going to click on the second item in the, in the row of the rich text editor, and I'm going to select heading two. Your title of the page is always going to be heading one. This is important for screen readers so that all of your material is accessible. Make sure that you use heading two, and then if you have any subheadings under that heading, you use the next subheading in order, heading three, and so on and so forth. If you want to enter new information or start a new topic on your page, you can also insert a line break up here and insert as I demonstrated before. You might not always want to just insert texts and you may want to insert documents or videos as well. To do this, we'll go up here to the rich text editor bar and find what we would like to insert. For example, if I'd like to insert a picture, 
I can click on here, the little down arrow, upload picture, add a course image, or add user images. For example, if I want to add my profile picture, I'll click on user images because I've saved it to my user account. And I can click on my profile picture and then it will add it to that page. I can exit this pop-out menu and see my picture in line text. The pictures are formatted this way to be accessible. It is not recommended that you use tables in order to format your pages and move this picture to the right side of the screen as it will be difficult for screen readers. Next, I can add information if I'd like to. I can also add alt text to this image by clicking on it. If I click on the image, I can click image options, and then I can change the alt text here. I can mark it as decorative image if it doesn't add information, or I can decide how it, how it looks. So if I want the image to appear on the page, I'll make sure it says embed image. If I just want it to display a link, I can click it here and it'll open the image in a new tab. I can also change the size. Maybe I want it to be a little bit larger and I'll click done. You wanna make sure that your image is still a high quality in the size that you choose. For example, it's quite pixelated here because it's really meant to be a small image. You can change it as much as you want there. Next, if you'd like to add video, you can always click on upload and record media or insert course media that you've already uploaded. I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate upload and record media. Here you can select media from your computer. For example, if I wanna upload a video about adding alt text to images, I can add an MP4 file by clicking it and finding it on my computer and clicking open. There will be a, a brief preview here. You can also add subtitles or closed captions and then submit your video. It may take a few moments to upload and then it will be embedded on the page. You can also record video directly on Canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and click the upload record media button again and demonstrate this. If I wanna leave short instructions for my students in video format, I will click on record. Here, you can choose whether or not to include your, your video. You can choose which microphone you're going to re record, and you can click Start Recording. It'll give you a countdown here where you can leave an audio or video file. Once you've, you're done talking, you can click Finish, you can title it, and once you click Save, it will embed it directly on the page. Notice how it's taking quite a long time to embed video. This is because these are large files. It's highly recommended that you host your videos on a different platform such as Dropbox, Google Drive, or even YouTube and insert them as links or embedded videos instead of directly uploading them. As you can see, they take quite a, a bit of space on Canvas and a long time to upload. However, you can add it here. Once it's done loading, you'll see these little play boxes. Students can speed up or slow down the video and even make it full screen. Another way to add video, as I mentioned before, is through a link. Here we can add an external link if we have something from the internet we want to add, or even course links. In this case, I want to embed a video from YouTube, so I'm going to choose this icon here and embed. It's a little counterintuitive, and it's a separate icon. You would think that maybe it would be with recording a video, but it's separate. If you want to embed a video, you'll need to have the embed code. To get the embed code, you'll need to host your video offline. For example, I host a lot of my grammar videos on YouTube. If I want to embed this grammar, Learn Grammar with Prof. Hale, about the future tense, I'm going to click on the video, I'm going to come down here to share, and I'm going to click on embed. Let's see that one more time. Here's the video, here's the title, and below the title, towards the center of the page, is going to be this share. Once I click share, there'll be different item icons, excuse me, and ways you can share. You can copy the link directly and post the link so students can click on it and watch it off of Canvas, or I can click here, embed, and see the embed code. I'm gonna highlight the embed code, and I'm gonna copy it. This way, the video will play directly on our Canvas page, and students won't get distracted by leaving YouTube and going down the YouTube rabbit hole. Now that I've copied the embed code, I'll come back here to where I can insert it, and I'll go ahead and paste it. Once I've pasted it, I can click Submit. Notice how much faster it was for the video to, to in, insert into the Canvas page. You can also insert course links so that students can access directly different areas on your course.
So let's say I want them to watch this video and then complete an, an assignment. Maybe I want to include the link to the assignment right here on campus. I can do this by clicking on the link. Again, I mentioned before you can add external links, but something really cool about Canvas is this course links. So I can go ahead and click on course links here and I can view any page, any assignment, any quiz, announcement, discussion, modules, or course navigation that I have. If I want students to review the syllabus, for example, I can click here and add a link to my syllabus. For this example, I'm going to say, watch this video and complete this assignment. Maybe I'll go ahead and click this random fake assignment name here. Once I exit, you'll notice that a hyperlink has been made and students will be able to click directly onto this and it will take them to that assignment page where they can complete and submit it. Next, another really cool thing about Canvas pages is you can insert external tools. There's this little plug icon here that's called apps. You can view all of your apps if you'd like to, and this is where you can add things from Dropbox, Google, Commons, uh, Commons Favorites, Canvas Studios, H5P content, Screencast-O-Matic, ShareStream, or VoiceThread. You can also insert different uh, ShareStream media if you had it from your course, either on Moodle or somewhere else. If you're wanting a st students to watch a documentary, for example, you want to contact the department on campus, campus, campus who can make it accessible for you through ShareStream, and then you can add videos from there. Next, you can also add different documents. For example, if I wanted to add the PowerPoint for this future um, tense lesson, I might want to say access the PowerPoint below, in which case I could embed the PowerPoint here. I'm going to go ahead and click on the down arrow next to it to say upload a document. Once I do that, I can click upload a file and I can search for the file on my computer. Once I have the document I'd like to upload, I'll go ahead and click on it and click open. Next, I'll click submit. You'll notice here that it has the title of the PowerPoint. I can also click on this and click link options. This way I can decide what the text says. Maybe I don't want it to say PPTX. Maybe I want to change it to PowerPoint. It'll show me the, the document link. And then I can choose if there's a preview of it or if it's inline. For example, if I'd like it to expand so that it shows the PowerPoint automatically, I can click expand preview by default. If not, I can leave it unchecked and students can choose if they'd like to see it that way or not. Next, I'll click Done. These are many things that you can add and access and add to pages. Hopefully, you'll organize your pages a little bit better and they'll be a little bit more meaningful than this example. Finally, I'd like to show you how you can adjust some of the formatting. You can change if it's centered text or if it's right or left justified. You can also add bulleted lists or information. It's really important that if you're going to add a list or a numbered list or a bulleted list that you use the integrated Canvas functions here so that it's accessible to screen readers. For example, if I want to say the different steps, step one, step two, step three, I may want to enter a numbered list. Notice that I just hit entered to add new information. I can hit enter again to end the, bullet, to end the numbered list. Finally, you can also indent things. For example, if I want to indent this further, I can click on the increase indent and it will scoot it over. I can also decrease the indent by clicking the down arrow and, make, and sending it back to where it was. Finally, I'd like to show you a few items down here. Here, you can see some shortcut keys if you are into shortcuts or want to be able to access items more quickly. There's also an ally uh, accessibility checker that's built in, so you can check and make sure that everything has what it needs. You can see a word count. You can also open the HTML editor if you would like to edit the HTML. You can view it full screen, and you may also extend or shorten the page so that you can see all of the material or less of the material. Finally, at the bottom, you'll have some different options. Typically, you'll want to make sure that only teachers are allowed to edit the page as many students may change information. However, if you're working on group projects or creating a collaborative page, you may want to allow students to access it so they can add their own information to a page. You can also add this to a student to-do list. 
I find this really helpful because you can set due dates for these pages and this content. For example, this is a lecture video and maybe I want to make sure they watch the lecture by March 31st before midnight. I can, I can do that by clicking the add to student to-do list. Next is mastery pass. This is a very advanced um, part of Canvas that is typically used in K through 12 and I implore you to explore it on your own if you're interested. Finally, if you've made changes to this content after students have viewed it, you can always click notify users that this content has changed before you save it or publish it so that they can know that something on this page has changed. Finally, if I'm ready for students to view it, I'm going to click save and publish. If I want to come back and edit later, I'll click save. I'm going to click save and publish for this demonstration. Now that I've published the page, you can see what it looks like for a student. We can click student view in the top right hand corner. Here you can see the title, the information, the picture we added, the video we embedded, the other uh, audio we embedded, and this embedded uh, video from YouTube. Notice students can access the closed captions here from YouTube and also watch it on YouTube if they like. They can click the link for that, that fake assignment we were talking about, or they can also access this PowerPoint. Notice if they click on it, it opens up a, a, a file preview here where they can scroll through the different slides for the presentation or they can click the download link in which case it will download for them. The final thing that's pretty cool about pages and the reason why headers are so important is there's also this immersive reader for students. At the top right hand corner of every page for students they can click on immersive reader. The immersive reader is really great for students. It can read text out loud, it can change the voice and speed of the text being read. They can change the sizing of the text and also the font and the coloring to make it easier for them to, to view. They can also look at grammar and identify nouns, verbs, and adverbs in different colors. They can also select their reading preferences for how much or how little of the text that they view, either one line at a time or paragraph. They can also access different words through a picture, a picture dictionary that explains what the word is. We have to remember that Canvas was designed not just for higher education, but also K through 12, and this is a really great resource for them. Sometimes they can also translate information on the page from English to Spanish, etc. Um, here, for example, they might be able to translate some of the information here, which is not completely accurate, but it sometimes provides interesting information. So they can also access that here. If they're using this, you'll need to make sure that they know that the translation is not 100%. This has been pages and how students can access them and what you can add to them. Um, and I hope that it's been informative. You can always check out more tutorials on the Canvas um, help pages online or other tutorials from the FDC. Thank you so much and have a lovely day.